Good morning, everyone. How is everyone doing in their quarantine? I tell you, this is crazy times, isn't it? Well, today I wanted to come and show you some of the things that I do. Um, one of the biggest ones is my Bible study, um, and I do scripture writing, and I have a war binder. So I wanted to kind of show you those kinds of things that I do in the morning. Um, and I try to do this as soon as my husband leaves for work. And I'm in my bedroom, and uh, I have a little table. <laughs> I'm not sure what you call this, but it's a little portable table that we've set up in here. And um, I can do my Bible study here. I had thought about moving it to my office, but for some reason, I just feel like this is where I need to do that. So, I'm going to show you what I do, okay? Um, I have you on a tripod. <laughs> I have the, my phone on a tripod. And so, I'm going to try to turn this so that um, you can see what I do. Um, I can tell you that my Bible study is on my iPad and it is, um, I cannot think of what, hold on, let me look real quick. <laughs> it's, it's just, uh, you version. It's a Bible app and I will actually show you that when I turn it down so that you can see what the app looks like. And I found at one of a Bible study that is called Draw Near, and it's a whole year um, of Bible studies. Now, my it's taking me longer than that um, because I'll like when we're when we were in Nashville, I didn't do my Bible study as much, and so I had to fix it so that it went back to the, the day and anyway it take, it's taken me more than a year but it has been a really good Bible study and in this app you can find some great Bible studies um, it has a um, search feature that you can search for certain things like faith if you put faith in, it would bring up Bible studies about faith. So, to me, this is a really good way to do a Bible study. You can also ask your friends to do the Bible study with you. And I like that feature also. And then I use, um, and I think I have said something about this before. I use, um, it doesn't have anything on the front of it, so it's hard to tell. But it is called the Scribe, here it is, the Scribe Bible Journal. And I have to admit, this has been one of the biggest things that has helped my Bible study. Sorry, I'm moving the table. So I'm going to turn it down so that you can see um, what I do for my Bible study. Okay, here is the Bible study. It is this one right here. And it just looks like a Bible. It says Holy Bible. And then it just says Bible underneath it. But I think that it is called version. And so when you go on, it's going to actually bring up <clears throat> my Bible study because I've already um, started. I, I already pushed it. So this is the Bible study. It's called Draw Near. And it's 365 guides to... Now I can't remember... To greater intimacy with God. So that is the Bible study that I'm doing. And um, I'm on day 151. So I'm one actually one day behind. But um, the Bible study itself, what I do is this verse right here. And sometimes it'll be a couple of verses. Um, but I will put that verse in my journal. I'm going to show you that in just a minute. And then after I do that, I read the devotion. Um, so I'm going to um, move this back. And if you see the laundry in the background,
please forgive that because um, <laughs> that is what I'll be doing after my Bible study. Okay, now what I do, and I hope you can see this, I'm having trouble seeing it myself. What I do is I go to that verse and um, I put the day, I said I was on day 151, and that's just me trying to keep up with the days. And then I write the scripture itself. Um, right here where it says scripture. I hope you can see that, yeah. Right here where it says scripture, I actually write the verse. And so, um, I hope I'm not pushing yours. I moved, I put in another table so I wouldn't be moving the camera too much. Okay, so I write the verse. And um, for me, uh, this is something uh, that I need to do. I'm a very visual learner. And so I, writing the scripture down, and it's in the wrong version. I do that all the time. I like the New King James Version. And sometimes it's different, but I changed it. So, if any man cometh to me and does not hate... usually try to take a little more time <laughs> and does not hate his father and father is small so I don't I think that means our earthly father hate his father and mother wife and children Brothers and sisters. Yes. And his own life. His own life also. He cannot be my disciple. Okay, one of the things that I try to do is I try to not make mistakes when I'm writing scripture. So, I, as I'm writing, I'm always trying to make sure I do the commas where the commas are. And then I write the reference, which just is Luke 14, 26. Luke 14, 26. Now, this journal is amazing, and I really, really like it. But I probably do not use it in exactly the same way. So, um, and then I go to, then I go to the um, devotion. And I'm going to move the camera, I'm sorry. Okay, then I do the devotion. And this says, unto death do us part. Although marriage is permanent on earth. It will not last forever. Jesus said it has been ordained for this world only. The sons of this age marry and are given in marriage. But those who are counted worthy to attain that age and the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Nor can they die any more. For they are equal to the angels and are sons of God, being sons of the resurrection. And so this reference is Luke 20, 34 through 36. Um, I guess is what she's talking, he or she is talking about the marriage part. And then it says, it is important that we keep this temporal quality of marriage in mind. While 
in this life, our marriages must last until death do us part. Yet each of us will stand alone before God. Therefore, our marriage must never come before our relationship with him. Jesus declares in Luke 14, 26, that he must come first in all our relationships. If we put him first, then our love for him will make all our other loves seem like hate in comparison. Jesus wants first place in our lives. When Jesus has first place in our lives, we will act with responsibility. We will provide the climate of warmth and fellowship that will make our homes full of love and godliness. Christ has left principles and guidelines to govern every Christian home. And if we really love him, we will keep his commandments. So um, when you look at this, it's talking about marriage. Sorry, I had to take a drink. It's talking about marriage, but then at the end, it's saying that all of that was to tell us that our love, our first love, has to be Christ. Okay, so I'm going to move the camera again. And so the next part of what I do is right here where it says observation and interpretation. This is where I write um, what I have learned through this Bible study. And so, um, I'm, what I got is, though marriages should be <laughs> permanent. Here on earth. And then I'm gonna, this is where I get our first love should always be Christ. So that was what I got out of it. Um, I don't know if you got something different, but that's what I got out of it. Now, right here, this is per probably where I do a little different. Um, but I think this is where I got the idea that I am always going to put an I will statement in this section. Because this is the application. So, what am I going to do about what I learned here? And so... I'm going to put, I will first love Christ and then my husband, my family, and then all others. So I think that this is what, this is the, the way that um, Christ wants us to be. He should be our first love. Christ should be our first love. Then if you are married, your spouse is supposed to be next. And then your family, which is your children, your mother, all those. And then after that, all others. And so that's what I got out of this. Now, remember, when you're doing your Bible study, it is what God is speaking to you, not what you kind of want. It's what God speaks to you. And so um, I think everybody, people might get different things out of different Bible studies, um, even at the same Bible study. That's one reason I think doing a Bible study with someone is, is pretty good because they might get something different out of it. Okay, the next section is prayer. And what I usually do here is I write out a prayer that goes along with what I just learned. 
So for me, I'm going to say father. <clears throat> Help me to always love you first. And then um, also show me how to love my husband. His name is Jim. Let's love Jim and my family with your love. Okay. So that's my prayer is Father, help me to always love you first. Also show me how to love Jim and my family with your love, which God's love is so strong for all of us that that's what I want to show um, to my family. Now, this is where I really kind of do different than the Bible study. Um, I mean, than the journal probably does. If you notice, this is darker right here. What you're supposed to do is all of that that I've just done is done in the morning. And then this is done in the evening. But I kind of do it all at one time. So the memory verse, and now I haven't got it. I've just about got it memorized. But <clears throat> oh, I was, what I was, I turned back because I know. Oh, one, chapter one. I mean, verse one. That's what I couldn't remember. Okay, so the Bible verses, I beseech you therefore brethren and now I'm going to have to look back because I can't remember if there's a comma there is a comma therefore brethren by the mercies of God I think there's a comma there. I'm trying to learn my commas. <clears throat> yes, there's a comma. And then, I see. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. Oh, let me see if it's body or bodies. Bodies. Uh, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Let me make sure I've got that. Yeah. A living sacrifice. Mm, sacrifice. And then there's a comma. Holy. Comma. Oh, shoot. <laughs> holy, accept, holy. Acceptable. Acceptable to God. Yes. To God. Sorry, I should know this one better by now. There's a comma there. Which is your reasonable service. Which is your reasonable service. Now I'm going to look because I can't remember if there's a period. There's a period. And then I put the reference, which is Romans 12, 1. Now, sometimes it might take me two weeks, and I've just started this one. But sometimes it might take me two weeks to learn a Bible verse. I just recently finished Ephesians Ephesians, I should be, know this one, Ephesians 6, 13 through 17, and I did two verses at a time till I got that one, but this one is my new one, <clears throat> which is, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, 
that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Romans 12, 1. And that's something else I do. I usually, after I write it, I say it out loud. Um, and then the last part is um, what you're grateful for. A lot of times it will be something um, about this Bible study. Uh, sometimes it's just something that I'm grateful for. And so uh, today I am grateful for... Um, let me think. I want to. I want to do. Um, I'm gonna actually say that I'm grateful for my daughter Rebecca. Um. And her love for us. She lives about nine hours away, and so that's pretty hard. Now, this at the bottom, I don't actually do, but it's a record tracking thing. This shows how many days, and you're supposed to color in the last one, but I don't really do all of that. So, that's my Bible study. Usually, I pray before, and I didn't do that today, but um, I'm going to do another video on the other two things that I do in the morning, which is my scripture writing and my uh, war binder. So I will show those to you in the next video. Thank you for coming. And if you enjoy this, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. And I'll see you in the next one.